we're gonna get to this bench puro AOC thing in a second, but real I mean, first of all, real quick, just I mean most I'm sure a lot of people who watch and listen know Champagne Sharks, but just you know, tell everybody again about Champagne Sharks, a little bit about what you guys talk about on that show. I, I love Champagne Sharks. Uh, very in the if you like this show, it's very likely you'll like that show and vice versa, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if I had to describe Champagne Sharks, I think it's basically what I always kind of wanted to see in the discussion on race and politics, but like no one else was doing. So I figured, let me just do the show that I would um, want to hear. And it's basically we try to um, see what's going on in the news, the culture, and then do a deep dive that's kind of like counterintuitive, but hopefully not contrarian, like, you know, not mm -hmm. just contrarian for its own sake. So, yeah, I mean, it's been received pretty well. And even when it's not received well, it's led to some good uh, shows. So it's. Yeah, you guys definitely leverage off of bad Twitter reactions, but into like actual interesting content. Yeah, but I'm trying to dial that back because right. I'm, I'm like, I'm going to burn a lot of bridges and like, <laughs> I'm not even anywhere yet. Like, it's, it's too early to burn. Well, you're somewhere. Well, I mean, some people get it everywhere they go just by burning bridges. Well, I guess that will lead us later when we talk about Celia <laughs> Banks. But. Yeah, but, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, it's weird. Like, people don't understand how what a weird small world Brooklyn is. Like, you run into people all the time. Like, That's it's true. very bizarre. That is true. Yeah. Uh, the. Uh, was I going to say? You and I, a couple weeks ago, I was on your show. We we talked about sorry to bother you, and you know that took us everywhere from like the nature of YouTube to the you know Cornell West versus Ta Nehisi Coates. Like there's you you facilitate conversations that are really entertaining and very pop culture literate and very sophisticated on race, and then they just sort of go. Like, I, you go all over the place in a way that's, like, very contained and smart. It's, like, intentionally all over the place, which yeah, is, like, exactly yeah. the kind of conversation I like. Obviously. Yes. Um, so a couple weeks ago, and you're going to – I'm going to throw this to you in a second because you had a whole thread on this, and I want you to talk about your impressions of just this whole dynamic. It was about a week ago Ben Shapiro uh, went out to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and was like, $10,000. <laughs> If we debate, I believe he actually said he would give ten thousand dollars to her campaign, which is yeah. illegal. That's actually a campaign finance violation, which is pretty funny. Like to be like the ultimate pedant de debate tweeb, and in your like offer where your subtext is like, you know what the fuck you're talking about. His offer is, how about in exchange for debating me, I engage in criminal activities, eh? And, and part of it's the thing kind of is, funny. stands love talking about like that woman. I forget her name, but who said, oh, of course a bartender from Queens is going to avoid a Harvard trained lawyer, you know, so right. his stands love bringing up. He's a Harvard trained lawyer and like a very basic, uh, campaign finance law. It's not even like an obscure one. He, uh, whiffs on. So he whiffs on in the, so, and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I mean, she said like, I've learned to, I think it was something effective. I've learned to not, you know, respond to men with bad intentions. And just even before she said it, I remember I was talking about it on majority report. I was main hosting that day and I was like, she has like literally everything better to do than give this little prick unearned media attention. And, uh, and this has turned into the new frame because now like, it's like, okay, you know, Cortez is, uh, you know, she's an inspiring story. She has charisma. She's smart. She's also saying things that frankly don't take that charisma to be persuasive to people because they're commonsensical. <laughs> like everybody needs healthcare. We should have a society that's radically more economically equal. You know, these mind-blowingly obvious things that in those cases, especially those cases, are in fact beneficial to 99% of people. And so obviously there's a positive response. And the only reason we don't have those things is because we live in an oligarchy. So now they have to go to like, you know, this stuff can't really work. And the way we prove this stuff can't really work is by, you know, insulting our intelligence. And you found this, this thing. We're going to go to it in a second. This is a tweet which really does capture the conservative mind because it just is so it's so dumb. it's so stupid on so many levels and i'm going to read the tweet and then i'm just going to have you take off from there and break down all your thoughts about every single part of this but benny johnson who i believe has benny johnson he's lost a couple of gigs over plagiarism is that true yes yes, yes. so yes. benny johnson who's just a a total hack and a total nobody 
uh, tweets out a meme. You know, this is a, this, I can't believe this meme is still going on, but this is the like, you know, one the jealous girlfriend is looking at the boyfriend who's craning his neck to stare at another girl's ass. And the way the memes work is it's always, you know, the girlfriend is always one thing and the girl that the boy is list looking at is or the girl is looking at is another thing. And in this case, the old girlfriend is Mar Karl Marx's Das Kapital. And then Ben Shapiro is looking at the new girl, which is Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. I guess the implication of this was that uh, Ben Shapiro had a, a moment where he wasn't a little conservative wind-up doll or a teenage conservative, and he was a Marxist? What? Break all this shit down, man. I can't I, even get my head around this. I don't know this. if I can break it down. I mean... Just the whole thing, though. Everything from the bothering of her to this tweet, because you had a lot of thoughts on this, so just take uh, over. My first thing is, that's just such a bad Photoshop. Yes. And it's like, anybody can do better than that. Like, like, like... Like, that's the first thing. The head is just off the body. It's really bad. But, <laughs> okay, they're bringing this up. Like, Benny Johnson's whole thing on the um, timeline leading up to this is he keeps making fun of Ocasio for not being smart. Mm. And Shapiro himself is doing something in very bad faith, which is what he's doing in bad faith is he's acting like Ocasio literally called him a cat caller. So he's saying stuff like, um, oh, I don't know what counts as cat calling in Queens, but, you know, I've never cat called a woman in my life. It's like, no, she's not literally calling you a cat caller. Like, it's literally in the tweet what she thinks the similarities are. She's saying that it's the same entitled mindset that you as a white man are entitled to the conversation or audience or to be entertained seriously by a woman, in particular a woman of color. And... She's saying that that same type of the world owes me a uh, conversation, or the world owes me to be taken seriously, right. whether you're way out of my league, whether you have any reason to be talking to me, whether it's you're even interested, you have to entertain me. That's what she's saying. And of course, you know, he's doing this pedantic thing like, oh, I, I've never cat called. That's slander. You know, she's uh, libeling me. Uh, she's calling me a sexual prat. It's like, oh, come on. Like, he's either stupid or he's this. Disingenuous. Uh, disingenuous. But either way, there shouldn't be New York Times articles talking to him uncritically and just letting him say all these stupid talking points um, without any pushback. But all these people started running with it, too. Like, oh, she's so stupid. She called him a cat caller. He's not a cat caller. And then what he ends up putting up is actually a hundred times more stupid. Like, literally, this is the most stupid intervention in this entire debate. It is. <laughs> And the arrogance, <laughs> right. and, and yeah, and this is like so many like white male conservatives just have this unearned smugness. Right. And like, I think we're all about earned smugness on TMPS. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're yes. going to be smug, at least be earned. But nothing's worse yeah. than a condescending person who's actually stupider than you. And there's just really quick, Trevor, yeah. I just want a little musical company because you talked about uh, leagues. And uh, you think that uh, Ocasio's response to Ben Shapiro might have gone something a little bit like this. I don't know if you recognize this beat. I oh, should be good. Ready for this? This could be the dance hall response to Ben Shapiro talking to. Is this to Steven Seagal? Is this what no, this is not okay. Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I was hoping. I love that. Song. That's when we get 5,000 patrons. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. You don't know the Movado? No, I recognize it now. This song does something. The this song could lead to some very nice wines to the young men in the audience. I will just give that as, or to all men in that audience. If you put this on, even if you think that you're not like me and you don't like Caribbean music, if you put this on in a party, it can lead to some extremely fun dance situations, which require very little effort on your part. Not even a party. She will do the work. Put it on in a dark basement and then something will pop up. Well, you maybe not. Know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean like even if you're by yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll it's just a, emerge. A woman will just pop up. You'll just get a fine wine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but really, this is what Ocasio <laughs> is saying to Ben Shapiro. All right. I just wanted to play that song, but I think it kind of worked. Yeah, it did. Yeah. But like, I, I want to listen to the rest of it. Yeah, me too. Oh, post game. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, like, he's so smug and pleased with himself. And then that stupid avatar, it just looks like the guy dumb enough to put this up. Like, <laughs> like you just picture him saying it, like, from the avatar on the top left. Like, 
It's such a perfectly stupid, smug <laughs> avatar. That, it's like the platonic ideal. Yes, yeah, the platonic idea of the guy <laughs> behind a meme this stupid who would be like smug and self-satisfied by it. I won't subject us to it, but uh, it yeah. looks like scrolling through his Twitter feed that he just learned how to take people's heads off and Photoshop them <laughs> up. <laughs> because there's a bunch this of is fresh for coming. Benny Johnson. <laughs> well, the next step, well, unfortunately, so if he just discovered it, if the, his previous career is any indication, he'll get better at this when he takes the next step, which is figuring out how to steal other people's memes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they might be did, funny. Yeah, some of yeah. probably even did do this. This who, even who this even has like the really annoying pedantic like conservative qualities in like a eight word tweet or whatever. Circa 2018, colorized dude. It's a photo. Yeah. yeah. Why is that necessary? It's none of it's right. It's not even footage. It's just a photo. This it's whole like, thing is just like an abomination to meme culture. Although I do have to say, uh, the comedic potentialities of Ben Shapiro, Street Holler, are pretty rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> hey, 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 bitch, let me holler at you for a second. <laughs> Where's my hug, Ma? Where's my hug, Ma? Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> you mad let you go out like that? <laughs> nah, 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 for real, for real, for real. Let me holler at you for a second. Oh, my God. And, and, oh, yeah. Oh, Hasa Diddy, bitch. You ain't gonna let me talk to you? I could see him, like, approaching a woman with a chart, like, explaining why, like, right, you know, she right. should be talking to him. Like, <laughs> well, statistics say, with our earning potential and our genetic compatibility, that we would, uh... Now, you may ask yourself why, if I look like a Cretan from the netherworld, why I would be approaching you, even though you're statistically more, more attractive and have a, uh, at least a C cup size. Well, for the following reasons. I attend Harvard University. I'm white. I'm a member of a secret fascist organization, which we ethnically cleanse the planet. will be uh, handy to be a part of. Or it could be super, or it could be orthodox. It could be like, like that's the hottest wig I've ever seen. <laughs> God damn, you have fine elbows, bitch. Whoa! <laughs> the worst, the worst part about this too is if you look at the replies, there's so many happy guys like high fiving each other at how stupid this is. He goes, "Wow, she's so dumb," and it's like, "Oh, <laughs> all of you should just kill yourselves." Not, not, not saying anybody should kill themselves, but they should kill themselves. Yeah, oh, right, right. Yeah. thank you. You yeah. did that correctly. See, Trevor's a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, but but I, you I mean, totally it, should not do what, what you I'm should saying do. That you should do. Yeah, yeah. It and I hope be, that you didn't notice that. It would what be I a did. horrible idea. If you did what you should do, but do it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> this and, and also, you know, what makes it very conservative. How damn old it is! Like everybody's done with it, and then they just discover it. Right. That's so right. Yeah. These 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 turning head memes were like the rage like six months ago. Yes. And what's amazing is like it doesn't even like I'm and not, they get it wrong. It's late and it's wrong. It's late and wrong. And I'm not like an extremely online like I, like there's no doubt that there's things happening on on Instagram and Snapchat that like I am behind the curve on like but at the same time like if you work in the media field like it should not it, like that is it, it's one thing to like not be ahead and I don't really give by the way I think being ahead of the curve is super overrated on some things like people like 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 with music like. I don't know. I'd actually like to establish that something doesn't suck first before I have like a private listening party about it. Like I don't, you know, this like obsession with being ahead of the curve is kind of overrated. But at the same time, like, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Like, you haven't seen this? You don't realize that this is already done? And again, I can't get over the implication that Ben Shapiro was once a Marxist. Yes, yes. Like the whole joke hinges on... Ben Shapiro being a Marxist. Something you used to really enjoy. Right. Yeah. He wasn't flirting with, like, he, Marx, Marx was his wifey. Like, he was, yeah, he wifed up Marx. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Adam Smith is like the side piece. He's like trying to holler at Adam Smith, but he wifed up Marx. God damn. <laughs> Let oh me look God. at you. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, Where is Benny Johnson at now? Uh-huh. Daily caller. Oh my! Of course. Also, like, how of can course. you how can you like be mocking somebody for being dumb and unqualified when you have just been given un like chances like no non-white non-male person would have gotten like who gets that many bites at the apple, you know? And right, but, but they think they earn everything. That's that's the thing. They assume everything that happens is because they earned it, even when they just uh, stumble ass first into 
a fourth chance, you know. But her, of course, she has not earned anything, you know. No. And something that's interesting, no, she's, too. She's, uh, she's super dumb. And you she's know, a 28-year-old who uh, pulled off one of the most significant political upsets in modern politics and speaks fluently and articulately and morally on a variety of platforms. You know, a fucking moron. Clearly not as smart yeah. as the person who made yeah, this meme. Right. Or the <laughs> yeah, guy. Right, yeah, clearly. <laughs> clearly not a guy who feels the need to put on a meme circa 2018 colorized yeah the guy who got butts of a plagiarizing is it like multiple times or something i like, believe it was yeah, multiple very times. smart you know i as got in trouble I once i got in trouble once uh, let me not be smarter this time like yeah yeah you know the really dumb thing about alexandria ocasio cortez is that every single time in these interviews she gets busted for quoting jeremy corbyn bernie sanders and eugene debs verbatim you know, I, I mean, that's to. just the kind of dumb shit that she gets. Out. Oh, wait, no, that's fucking Benny Johnson, who incidentally, like the guy didn't get caught. Like it, it wasn't some like, you know, I had a great, you know, he had like a great book to write. And he was a young talent who succumbed to the pressure. He was some mediocre hack writing right wing bullshit for like BuzzFeed and other places. Like if you can't figure out how to jingle those sentences together without stealing, like. Maybe you ought to like give the world a rest and like live with your parents. That's a grift. That's like the easiest grift. It's such an easy grift. Like you can't even do that right. Have you guys seen Bethany Mandel's tweet? I uh, know Bethany Mandel. Do you want to shoot that? We could. You, Brendan, is there a way to find that? Maybe. Uh, Beth is Bethany Man. I don't know Bethany. Um, Mandel. she's she's um she's some kind of conservative com calmness. Her. Bio on Twitter says wife to Seth Mandel. Oh, Seth Editor, Mandel is uh, a far right um uh uh, uh op-ed for yeah. New York Post and commentary. Oh my god, she has a podcast called The Sethany Show. Which is Seth and Bethany. Yeah. I just found Kill it. yourself, but don't. <laughs> don't, don't, don't <laughs> but do. don't, but kill yourself, but don't. Uh she she <laughs> tweeted, I'm shocked a bartender from Queens doesn't want to debate a Harvard Law graduate. And what I love about that is these are the people who always act like they're for the little guy against the elites. Right. The elites, the elites. And they don't fucking like uh, blue collar people at all. Like they're dripping with contempt from the, for them. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. Keep going. Just yeah. Yeah. yeah they're just dripping yeah. with contempt for them. And they are as elitist or contemptuous of, you know, the uneducated and the whatever. But they'll use these whole like... Uh, the elites talking points whenever uh it's it's suitable like like how could you even say that and then on top of that like why do all of these conservatives act like she's obligated to answer him he's not even a, ca a candidate i don't i mean well like look who if if say chris hayes was like you just won a Republican primary somewhere. You're obligated to debate me. These guys would all go, you're a delusional liberal, you know. I mean, but the thing, and it's funny. I mean, look, so obviously there's the hypocrisy there, but whatever. Hypocrisy is obviously way past the point of pointing out any of these people. It's, it's just an interesting, because like, look, Ben Shapiro's first move makes sense. He's just a media hustler like everybody else, and he's trying to get attention. So whatever, fair enough. But then when she does the obvious thing, which is, you know, blow the little prick off, then they work themselves into a lather where they like absolutely show what complete classist assholes they are and then are like aggrieved that they don't get, you know, entitled to somebody's time. I also think that like, look, you know, yeah, Ben Shapiro never had to work. He's a rich kid from L.A. Like all of this stuff in American life. And I and I know even some people who are more liberal just get really uncomfortable. when You just point out like like me. I'll, you know, I didn't get to come and do media internships. My family was poor. <laughs> Therefore, I have to do work. Somebody who was set up to do those internships because their parents could subsidize them. Like, this is reality. The woman's father died, and she worked, I believe, multiple jobs to save her family's house. 
And not only like, in fact, that's laudable by anybody's standards. It's actually particularly laudable by their like asshole standards. Whereas like people like us look at that and we think actually it's a total moral wrong that any person would be put in that position. Like, that house being lost shouldn't have even been a question. But, you know, they just, they tell on themselves all the time. That's just, that's their jam. That's all they do. And you know what she did that made me really mad at her is that she put me in a position where I agree with Tom Watson, which <laughs> I never ever want to do. But if you go up, she says, um, Tom Watson calls her a racist. And she goes, I can't even tell when people are joking anymore. Like, hey, I, But I think this is racially coded, and I'll say why, because, you know, she can't really say, hey, uh, this Hispanic bitch doesn't want to debate this uh, white guy. Hey, this Hispanic bitch doesn't want to date me, say. <laughs> but, uh, like ben she, Shapiro would actually be a hell of a lot more entertaining. Yeah, I know, it would be entertaining. <laughs> but, but it's like, if it was reversed, and she was from Harvard Law School as a Latina, right. and he was a white Jewish uh, bartender, she wouldn't be saying this. She would be like, uh, okay, she got it by affirmative action. You know, the fact that she's a Harvard Law graduate just shows, like, look, this dummy in Harvard, for Harvard Law graduate, you know, is being outclassed by this guy who probably should have gotten her spot. Like, like it's right. not really about what she says it's about. Like, you know, and I mean, I don't know if he's right for the wrong reasons or if he had the same type of uh, logic I did, but I don't think it's really about. I think if it was reversed, her race and her gender would cancel out the Harvard Law graduate, and suddenly his, the fact that he was a bartender from Queens would become a laudable uh, thing. Right, well, I was going to say, they'd actually flip it. Then yeah. it would be like, you know, why can't the highfalutin lawyer have, like, a down-home blue-collar convo? I guess there's no affirmative action in debates, you know, or something like that. Right, exactly. I mean, we all know that the game they're playing, and I think that is why, you know... Wait, I just want to add yeah, one, go one, ahead. one more thing. I hate when she goes, wait. Can people still see these tweets, by oh. the way? You want to click back on them? Go ahead. Um, wait, am I supposed to pretend someone who had an undergraduate degree they weren't using? And Ben Shapiro's not using his degree. Uh, is as good a debater as someone with a Harvard Law degree? And it's like... Sorry, I guess I was. Carry on. Yeah, but prove he's a good debater. Like she's a, She's taking it as a given that he's a good debater. I've never seen him make a point that wasn't uh sophistry or whatever like but that's how they define yeah. good debate that's literally like that's true sophistry, sophistry is their whole trade yeah, i right. also think like who cares like you know we're so past the point of debate like being a healthy or interesting or relevant or revelatory thing in this discourse like it's a silly game yeah that it's you rhetoric. Know, it's rhetoric. It's games. It's tricks. It's, yeah, yeah, and it favors. It's, it's not some, actually governing. No, and it's like so what? So like, some little nerd can create like a self-contained chessboard with his own rules and his and 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 traps and traps and build a little frame. It doesn't matter. It's utterly irrelevant. It has nothing to do with anything that's going on. It has nothing to do with the power that actually determines politics. And even in a positive sense, it has nothing to do with like the actual exercise of disagreement, dialoguing and engagement. It's all just nonsense. And, and they, that's the reason why yeah. he likes it. That's why he likes debates. And that's why they, they like to exploit a broader culture of illiteracy and intellectual insecurity that confuses talking in a fast obnoxious way and having decontextualized anecdotes and random stats as intellectual performance it's not it's a it's 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 more analogous to like you know a, a random arbitrary skill set it's like a mean version of rain man except rain man at least could tell numbers and help actually win in a fucking casino it's a i i have zero less than none n only contempt for that mode of discourse and the scam and by the way the trivialization that they've convinced a whole bunch of people that like that is what intellectual rigor and debate is being an incurious nasty nerd yeah and the people who love debates are not the people who you want to even sway on anything like the people who like what he does. And there was an article in the New York Times that was really bad because it kind of uncritically let him just 
respond with all this intellectually dishonest stuff. And they didn't push back on any of it. And nothing in here backs up her assertion that he's a good debater based on these points. And the fact that, like, this article is its own best case for why she shouldn't debate him. Because I would not want to have to pick apart all the sophistry in this, in debating him. And I have an actual serious campaign to run. Like, if anything, it would make it look very unserious to be with this um, buffoon who only gets legitimacy because he's a white male from Harvard Law School. I mean, that's, that, that's pretty much it. I mean, he says things like um, slandering discussion and debate are not bad intentions. Uh, they can be. The, yeah, you're very... They can easily be. You can have yeah. bad, inten- bad faith discussion all the time. Like, what are you talking about? I mean, my God, I hate to do this, yeah. but even, like, if you look at old... Uh, William F. Buckley shows. And first of all, you know, William F. Buckley was an arch reactionary, you know, segregationist. I have no, like, his. he should be remembered with contempt. But frankly, like, yes, he did have on people like James Baldwin and argue and articulate loathsome points, but he clearly had a format where he actually desired to elicit ideas from other people. And that's just true. And that is a qualitative difference. Ben Shapiro has ne- Ben Shapiro is a right wing propagandist, and the most interesting thing about him, and sad thing about him, is the way that you know sophistry and reputation laundering through the intellectual dark web has conned a whole bunch of mediocre, gullible journalists at places like the New York Times to pretend that speaking fast and mouthing right wing sentiments is intellectual rigor. It's not. And because these people, for as supposedly liberal as the New York Times is, they have more in common with him right. and his culture war bullshit. They love this culture war bullshit, and they hate the ideas becoming irrelevant as people are starting to move leftward and really get engaged on actual issues. Right. And Ocasio to them is as much a threat to the so-called liberals at the New York Times you know, as, as she is to these right-wingers because they don't really want to talk about real solutions either that's going to raise their taxes. You, you right. know, uh, but the rest of the stuff he says here, he adds... Slandering someone as a sexist catcaller without reason or evidence does demonstrate cowardice and bad intent, however. And her tweet clearly was not literally calling him a catcaller. And for him to pretend (laughs) that she's actually calling him a real catcaller and defend it on a literal basis is either he's stupid or he's dishonest. Why would she debate him? Why would you want to waste time having to say, oh, well, actually he wasn't saying like it's stupid it's a waste but then, w- one last thing that she said I'm gonna, I'm gonna no no keep going, keep going. no rush no rush one no last rush. thing that he said was this is from the article i'm going to read it verbatim in a phone interview on friday mr shapiro rejected that there was anything sexist about his offer saying that he could see himself making a similar offer to an older male ideological opponent and then he added this i would offer bernie sanders 50,000 to debate. Absolutely, he said, referring to the Vermont senator. What in the world does this have to do with her being a woman? Which is very stupid because, like, you can say anything in a hypothetical. Like, you know, like, hey, you've only beat up black people uh, in your whole career as a cop. Well, yeah, I've only beat up black people, sure, but I could see myself beating up a white person. Hell yeah, like, like, theoretically, I would beat the yeah. shit out of an innocent white person as I well. Could say, I, could say, I could say that to uh, anybody. Like, oh, you're a rampant uh, sexual harasser of women. Well, I could see myself not sexually harassing a woman. By the way. Or sexually harassing a man. Like, By the way, Ocasio did, again, once again, she did not say that he was a sexual harasser. She said he had bad intentions, and she also implied this. What's on the... For some reason, when this plays, I just imagine Ben Shapiro at a base at a baseball party. I imagine tr- him trying to creep a, I, You see, I imagine him in a corner drinking a little <laughs> oversized cup that's like bigger than his body, and looking at everybody having fun. And then I realized, here's the problem. This is why he's such a little asshole. <laughs> And this is what so much of it comes down to. But you know what else is crazy about this? On top of the fact that she's, she, he brings up a hypothetical to refute her, like, well, I could imagine myself not doing this. 
even in his hypothetical, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't challenge Bernie Sanders. Yeah, exactly, he didn't. But even in his yeah. hypothetical, he offers Bernie Sanders fifty thousand dollars to her ten thousand. So he basically gives her a pay gap. He, <laughs> like, he's so, so fucking right. dumb. He says, "Well, I can see myself offering her five times. Why? Because he's male. Because he's all white? five times the sexism and the campaign finance law. Like, he's uh, not even smart enough to say I could see myself offering him him the same deal." <laughs> he's this, but no, he's a Harvard Law graduate, so he's smart. You know, right? We have to take it as a given that he's like. Why should she debate him? Like, but well, why, these people why they is, confuse testing with intelligence. I mean, that's yeah. a bigger, you know, big but, problem. But why is the person writing this not even pushing back? This is basic shit. Because that is how they get sucked in. Access. Well, it's it's totally access. No, and I think also Trevor's. T it's act. You're right, and I think Trevor's also right that it's like. That's the sweet spot of their bullshit. Like, I, I have been in conversations with so many people who are, you know, they're probably, frankly, they're, they're for what it's worth, like they're Democrats, right? But that language of like debate and discourse, and I mean, they just get hoodwinked and hustled by it every single time. And what's really amazing is that those principles in their actual forms are actually quite important. And nobody has done more to destroy their brand than these people. I mean, anytime somebody in public life talks about open exchange of ideas, you either are like, okay, that's either a crypto Nazi or a disingenuous far right propagandist. When in like a healthy society, you'd say, oh no, those are actually legit important values. <laughs> but they, they, it's like, yes, those things are under threat by you. <laughs> Okay, the last thing we we'll say about yeah. this article, yes. because he just keeps getting dumber. He, uh, the article goes, and the worst thing is this article puts the actual tweet by Ocasio in it to start. So the author clearly read the tweet. Right. So she can like push back or say something, but the article continues. He also criticized Ms. Ocasio-Cortez's analogy of catcalling, labeling it in, quote, unquote, insane accusation. Holla, holla, holla. Now... In, a set, in the sentence, she says analogy, meaning that she gets that it's not literal. She uses the word analogy, but she lets him just say this. I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I have never catcalled a woman in my life, he said. So he's continuing this thing like he, like he literally called her, called him a catcaller. He said, I don't know how they catcall down in Queens, <laughs> but it must be weird. You know, and it's like, okay, first off, what does being an Orthodox Jew have to do with anything? Does being an Orthodox Jew render you immune to catcalling and if it does who do, who racially or whatever would you have to be for it to be natural like what's puerto rican yeah that's yeah, science i'm not from where she's from like like he's yeah. kind of basically analogizing you know her people i'm right. an orthodox jew unlike you like none of this is pushed back on in the article the fact that it's not like you know it doesn't say anything like despite the fact that she was clearly using an analogy mr shapiro said such and such it doesn't say that and again, the Orthodox Jew thing is this is the brilliant guy that, you know, Mandel thinks that um, she should be running scared from. I have to say, and I don't like I'm not going to I don't trash Orthodox Jews. I don't tra I don't essentialize anybody. I'm actually pretty good about that. But just as a matter of reality, uh, if you ask any like woman and maybe by Orthodox, he's doing a, a trick and excluding Hasidim. But presumably Hasidim are more orthodox than Ben Shapiro because they're actually like, you know, running around Williamsburg and doing their thing, not like doing trash podcasts. Uh, uh, they're, they're, some of them are very good at hollering at women on the street. Some of them are actually super skillful at catcalling. And you have not lived until you've seen some like like guy named Yuri who's dressed like he's in like 18th century Poland and looks like he has like five cases of scoliosis being like, hey, you from here? <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, talk to you. You know what I love is I would, every time, because those guys all, every time they see a white person, they always ask, you do this, you do this? And I remember one time I was walking with a girl I was dating and, and she was a black girl. Yeah. And they, and usually when they would see you like with a girl, you know, of another race and I've had this experience several times they're you know they're just kind of like, <laughs> and so <laughs> so much for the not essentializing impression here so the guy came up though and he's like and he literally is like you know he's kind of he wasn't like he actually was nice to her like he smiled at her 
And so he was like, you know, he wasn't bad to her. He acknowledged her presence, but he turned to me and he's like, I was like, no, but she is. And he's just like, (laughs) (laughs) and then we walked off. He was confused. I I was, I felt like Trump. I turned around. I was like, Ethiopian, Ethiopian Jew. You know, it's funny. Um, (laughs) My friend works in uh, my friend works vice. He's a cop. Um, Right. Um, he works by, so he told me that they bust those guys all the time with, like, uh, prostitutes of all different races. Well, I mean, look, anytime you get into a community where they're super suppressed, right? Yeah. It shows up. Those are, like, they're literally stats. Like, I've read somewhere, like, there, there there's some, and obviously, like, everywhere in the world, like, everybody's looking at a huge amount of pornography, but I think they literally, like, in the United States, highest pornography rates are in the most Christian conservative states. And globally, some of the highest countries are in, like, the Middle East, right? Like, it just makes sense. Like, if you're suppressed, it's going to come out. No, definitely. Right? So uh, so that being said, I would speculate, and the key word here is speculate. What Ben Shapiro is really trying to say is, oh, my God, Ma, please. <laughs> See, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was not saying that, but I'm guessing that. Uh, what what brand what brand is that shirt? Because it must say made in heaven. <laughs> I like how I'm just taking it that he's like straight up grimy, but you're actually capturing the type of <laughs> fucking lame shit that he actually would say. <laughs> there was another Did it hurt? <laughs> <laughs> what? When you fell from heaven? <laughs> oh, it looks, it looks like you uh, it looks like you uh, dropped something. It looks like conversation. Let's uh, pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultimate Ben Shapiro hollow line. <laughs> Want to debate? <laughs> Want to debate in the sheets? <laughs> Want to have a free and open exchange of bodily fluids? <laughs> I'm gonna fill, I'm gonna filibuster you open. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, Ma, don't filibuster. <laughs> I'm going to filibuster nut. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. All of a sudden, I'm sorry, I was going to say, sorry, now sorry. we're making Ben yeah, Shapiro yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's <laughs> now he, now he could be here. <laughs> <laughs> this is an alternative world where he studied abroad or something. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a new character. Uh, ben Shapiro is a halfway paid up member of the human race. P- P.U.A. Shapiro. Or something. P-U-A, yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of those old. Old videos <laughs> like when all that those that trash was popular he's just like a lot of guys think they can't get girls i'm here to tell you i was really shy in high school i didn't get many dates i have banged supermodels from every single continent including <laughs> brazilian twins how did i do it the four steps confidence conversation debate and infatuation okay we're gonna go through the steps here every, everything <laughs> everything is debatable even though no. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, uh, now no, we're getting into the real creepy. She says no. Ask her to debate. <laughs> I have literally overpowered with logic, unwilling <laughs> women from across all four. <laughs> I have literally exhausted women into dates, sex, and even more. <laughs> this debate tactic called sex by attrition. Right. Never fails. Just debate her until she just wants you to shut up. Now you go. Now you've studied at some highfalutin liberal school. You go. Wait. It sounds like you're advocating some form of sexual coercion. It's not. And I'll legally explain to you why. I went to Harvard Law School. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> now, now, now we literally are just talking about that whole scene. But actually, that he missed his true calling. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine like the people at the Ben Shapiro uh, boot camp, <laughs> the dredges of society. Confidence, conversation, debate, infatuation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that sketch. Oh, my God. Be. That's a great sketch. Yeah. Have you ever seen Magnolia? No. Where oh, Tom, you're Tom Cruise, Cruise is yeah. like the I didn't, No, I've never seen that guy. movie. I've never Just having it. like Ben Shear... Ben Shapiro as him instead. Oh, that'd be so good. And get on it. (laughs) Oh, one of your viewers has to put the head on Tom Cruise, a floating Ben Shapiro head on Tom Cruise. And then say, and then whatever way you meme it, just make sure to say colorized (laughs) circa 2018 so we know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, You got to say, you got to, okay, this is uh, the scene bench. This is who Ben Shapiro needs to be. (laughs) <laughs> How'd you guys like those nachos? 
<laughs> and change the pitch to make oh, it high pitch. Oh, yeah, well, you were not here for pitch. the fucking food. You are here for me to enlighten you, to edify you, to send you off into the now not so unknown future. So come along with me. And the graphic he exposes is so good. Like you are nice and caring. No, I, I don't want a microphone. Now, this, <clears throat> this is a quite an important chapter, as you will see. But let's get down to brass tacks. Let's get right down to it, boys. Let's get right down to it. Men are shit. <laughs> what? Men are shit. <laughs> well, isn't that what they say? Isn't that what? Because we do bad things, don't we? We do horrible. We do horrible things, things don't we? Heinous. <laughs> and PTA was things, way ahead of the curve on this. This was before the no PE waste of actually blew up. Wow. Would ever do. So this is real cultural antenna filmmaking women, here. They don't lie. No, women don't cheat. Women don't manipulate us. I Which like this. He's at. like the Malcolm X of oh, yeah, rapey white men at. right here. Yeah, this is terrifying. 1999. This is 1999? Yep. Wow, oh, they were reading the toxic yeah, culture. I'm to apologize. I am sorry. I'm so sorry, baby. I am so sorry. What is it that? What is it? Huh? All right, so yes. Is it their, their pussies? Their, uh, is it their love? pussies? Is it their yeah, pheromones? Wouldn't let me play soccer, and daddy, <sighs> oh, he hit me. So that's. All right. See, this is very prescient. Wow. So I was going to say, way more prescient than I remember. This is the full description of everything that's going on. <laughs> because Unfortunately. Right now, yeah, yeah, because it brought in like the PC and you can't be a man shit. It's, yeah. Wow, it's way more pressure than I remember. Can't be a man. Gonna have to revisit that. 